Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always by GR Dad. Hi. How's it going, GR Dad? Pretty good. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> the cocktail of the week this week is the Marine Barracks Artillery Punch. It's a barrage. <laughs> so uh, this weekend, GR Dad and I went up to Maryland together, a thing that we have not been doing lately. No, it's been years, it seems like. It might not be years, but it seems like years. It, it may be close to years. We've spent each spent time in Maryland without the other. Yep. So we had had two things planned in spring of 2020. We had tickets to the My Dad Wrote a Porno live show. That's which, a whole thing. It just, it's a podcast. Look it up. Uh, it's great. And we had tickets slash reservations at Pineapple and Pineapple and Pearls, which is a two star Michelin two Michelin star restaurant in DC. We've been there a bunch of times. Yeah, um, it's one of these restaurants where you buy tickets as opposed to like a reservation. So the tickets cover your meal. If you buy alcohol, it tends to be in addition to the ticket. Sometimes it's included, but basically means you pay in advance, right? Yeah, you pay in advance. Uh, so we had those for spring of 2020 and of course everything got canceled and the, my dad wrote a porno live show got rescheduled for last Friday. (laughs) And then, uh, so, you know, that's what it was. We had our tickets and they're like, now your tickets are for Friday. And you know, this is in like the fall. And then we get an email from pineapple and pearls probably around the new year. That's like, Hey, we're finally reopening. Uh, since you had reservations when we shut down, you get first dibs and it's impossible to get reservations there. Like if you want them now, you maybe can get them for August, but I think September. And so I was like, hey, we're going to be up there for my dad wrote a porno. Why don't we go the next day to Pineapple and Pearls? And so we snagged those reservations, um, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, this is like a DC problem. It may be a New York problem too, where it's like there are some really good places, but they you can't get reservations anytime soon. Yeah, that's right. right. You you really have to start planning around <laughs> the reservation because it's often I think Pineal and Pearls like the website opens every the first of every month that opens up the reservations and then they fill up like a Springsteen for like, concert. They fill them up for like two months ahead. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Um, maybe Rihanna concert or something else for younger, for our younger listeners. Don't, don't try to relate to our younger listeners. Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Pineapple and Pearls just reopened like a week ago. So we were one of the very first seatings. Um, now I gotta say, I have done zero things indoors since COVID started. Basically. Um, I was kind of unhappy last week about the fact that I was going to both go to this show indoors which like I would do super masked, but then also go eat inside, which is not a thing I have done. That is the first time that you've eaten inside for what long? I was extremely stressed about it. And fortunately we got to sit at the bar, which looks into the kitchen and I got up against the wall. So I was quite isolated from everybody. I was the only person who wore my mask the entire time, except when I was putting food in my face. Um, I was breathing on you the most. (laughs) <laughs> you were um which is accurate description of our entire day <laughs> it's it's not super safe to eat inside but that configuration was about as safe as it could be mm-hmm. like i was very far away from everybody else yep. and like i said stayed masked the whole time um so far so good but so pineapple and pearls just outstanding amazing experience and they have you know i think as a lot of places have done kind of revamped their experience since they've been you know they've been closed since march of 2020 so this is they have just reopened um and they've gone for like a super over the top glam like fancy 70s glam yeah yeah so um when you get your confirmation they're like we don't have a dress code you can wear whatever you want but if we did have a dress code it would be extremely fancy like your very fanciest new year's eve outfit just, just playing exactly to you as the audience like could like, not that is exactly what you want to hear <laughs> I could not pick something more like what i would want to wear uh i was like we're doing it so i wore like an uh dress that's like the base fabric is iridescent like 
It's gray straight on, but purple blue iridescent with silver glitter, silver glittered shoes, silver pink glittered bag. I was all glitter head to toe. Yeah, but it's not like in your face. The iridescent is like subtle, right? When the light catches it, it looks all shiny, but it's not like glitter. You know, it's not sequined. Not sequined. Yeah. yeah. So it was, I, I thought it was cool. Inga wore a tux. I, I have a tux, so I can just put it on sometimes. And uh, it, which every man should have. There will be yeah. times that you can wear a tux. You it's get your money's it, worth. Yeah. Sure. If it's like three balls or three, you know, in a weddings, you, you've like made your rental back and you know, it fits, you know, where everything is, you can have the, the right stuff. It's like, and you don't have to return it the next day yeah, <laughs> at I mean, eight it, in the morning when you're hungover. That's your tux, tux that you got for our wedding, um, which was about eight years ago. You've worn it a dozen times, at least since the wedding i've either worn or wanted to wear it about a dozen times yeah. <laughs> uh so we showed up in you know glitter dress and tuxedo you walk in and they're like can we in the little lobby when you walk into the place before they take you back into the seating area they're like can we offer you a drink and they have a bottle of dom perignon on ice and these big tall champagne coupes i mean did not suck they are now this is an extremely expensive dinner this is like a once every couple of years kind of event um, but the, the, that sets the tone for the whole evening that they have Dom on ice when you walk in and give you a flute of it, a coupe of it. Yeah. And, and as with many of these, um, high end restaurants that we like going to when we can, when we've saved up money, they don't make you feel stupid. They're not snobby. They don't talk to you in French. They're ne they're yeah. never, they're, ne they're always like make it really pleasant and make you welcome that there's no like well if you don't know what this ingredient is That's you're right. a peasant who doesn't belong <laughs> no they're like it's very accessible and they're having fun and you're having fun and it's nice yeah you yeah. feel like you're in included for sure and, and we have eaten i mean our kind of hobby certainly this is the first time we've done it since covid uh, but certainly before was to find these kinds of restaurants and go to them, right? So it's an expensive hobby, but whatever. It's like you seek it. It's like instead of going to Disney World, we spend our money on vacation where we'll go to one of these places. Yeah, it's dogs and travel. Yeah, that's right. And uh, this, I have to say, was the most, maybe except for Alinea in Chicago, the most just like outright, like we're going to have a wild fun time with this, right? Like some of them are a little more formal than this. They're yeah. always fun and accessible, but we've this gone some Vegas places that are what way more formal, and they are a little bit more French and a little bit more not as they weren't. They didn't seem as welcoming, even though we we had a this we was had a good of, experience. This yeah. was sort of jovial, yeah. Here, yeah. Um, so they are modeling themselves after I think the Octopus Room. Am I remembering the name right? Now I've got to I look don't. I mean, there were a few influences, and someone's cat, and someone's mom. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm going to have to look it up because it, it was next like to what the 54, whatever that club, club was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like an 80s glam restaurant, and and so they sort of open this this evening. They make you a cocktail, not one that you order. They just make you one at your at where you're sitting. And then they're like, so, you know, they used to have this uh, this dish where they would handcuff you and then they'd bring it out on these pillars and you'd have to... This was in the octopus room, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to eat it off the pillars. And uh, so they're like, so we're doing that. We don't have to handcuff you. Though it turns out they did have handcuffs. We did not get handcuffed. It would have been an interesting option. If I had known ahead of time, I would have been like 100% yes. Remember we did that Valentine's Day <laughs> thing and they handcuffed us together? The Crime Museum, which is now closed in D.C., uh, was super fun. It was somehow affiliated with America's Most Wanted. Plus, you know, it had kind of, it was a museum of crime, right? And they had, it was great. They had like a, a shooting simulator which I did with my dad once. And so they've got these like nine millimeter Glocks, which is a gun that I know how to shoot. And you're, you know, it's obviously doesn't have bullets in it. Right. But it's, <laughs> uh, but it's an actual Glock and they've got it set up where you can shoot, you know, at a screen where there's a the laser infrared. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, I think I got 10 out of 10 on it. <laughs> I did it once with my dad when he was here on vacation. I did better than him. I was going to say, did you beat him? <laughs> I did. I beat him. does not go over well. <laughs> but they did a Valentine's Day at the Crime Museum one year. 
And when you come in with your partner, they handcuff you together and you have to go through the whole museum handcuffed together, including the shooting thing, which we did. We did the shooting. Uh, yeah, it was good. Thing. I don't know. We did all right. We had a fun time. Yeah. Handcuffed together the whole time. Uh, we did not get handcuffed in this thing, but they they bring out these like just delicious little bites on these like crystal pillars all the food was everything was just amazing i i kind of wanted to cry at the end because like this is a thing we used to do a couple times a year before covid and you know i was really worried last week and i'm sort of uncomfortable with the process like i wouldn't want to do that again until the covid situation is much better but it is a thing i have missed so much like it's really the thing it's a production it's a it's a show and it tastes really good the food is so yeah. good um, so anyway, normally when we go to these places, we get a bottle of champagne and um, and they have a great champagne list, but they had a cocktail list and I was like, well, you know, we don't need to do cocktails. And then we saw they and have I was like, no, no. Did you see that first cocktail? <laughs> the first cocktail on the list is the Marine Barracks Artillery Punch, our cocktail of the week. So this uh, restaurant is near the um, Navy Barracks in D.C. So the old Marine Barracks are literally across the street. Um, they some of them may still be active. Some of them are getting rehabbed. Yeah, but we drove past the Navy we barracks next and to we them, saw yeah, yeah the, the guy, the guards, and so I was like in the mindset. So the Marine Barracks Artillery Punch. It says served for two, not for school nights, which is <laughs> already <laughs> piqued my interest. Um, so it has rum, uh, rye, rum, and then sweetest punch, which not p u n c h but p u n s c h. Um, which punch. is punch, <laughs> which is a liqueur. You can, if you don't have it, which we don't, I don't have it here. Um, you can substitute kahaka for <laughs> it. <laughs> now you're just doing one obscure for another. Like I know. Maybe you could get globlida. <laughs> <laughs> you can get kahaka. I mean, we got it at Publix. They have it. Uh, Swedish punch is a little hard. But how to do get. you spell kahaka? Yeah, it's got the C with the little circum, the thing at the oh, bottom. Oh yeah, kachaka. Yeah. Oh. You, it's what you make a caipirinha with. I say kachaka. It's sugar. It's, it's sugar, sugar cane. Sugar it's cane punch. It's sugar cane rum. Yeah, it's in it's in the direction of rum. But if you like taste a rum and then you taste the thing, you're like, that's not the same thing. I think in Brazil they call it kachaka, but that that could be because it's Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so it has Swedish punch in it, and then half a bottle of champagne. <laughs> and <laughs> it they looked real small. I'm not sure that was half a bottle. <laughs> they bring it to you in uh in this like <laughs> what is it it's like a cone sort of like a punch bowl except it's more conical shaped and it has a faucet on the front and it has a little spigot on the front there's a name for that but i don't know what that's called and you get two glasses two kind of like uh big koopy kind of <laughs> glasses but yeah. like small bowls with and a it stem. does have fruit in it and stuff too I mean, lemons it's, it's in got, it yeah yeah and uh and so you can just pour some out for yourself um there's probably three drinks in there i think we we actually tilted the thing sideways so the spigot would still get, <laughs> all, get the all the liquid out of it we were we shaking it around with the second time we were shaking it a bit we had to <laughs> uh it was fantastic it was really good really celebratory i mean we just had it was such a fun time i wish covid were gone so we could just do it more often because i really miss doing that um but anyway i was like oh that should be the cocktail of the week and then i was like i should try to make a version of it here, I think I got pretty close. Yeah. So uh, the version of it that I made here is three quarters of an ounce each of rye whiskey, blonde rum, kachaka, and simple syrup, and an ounce and a half, so basically twice as much, lemon juice. Shook that up a little bit and then put in um, one of the mini bottles of champagne. So we, I buy these mini bottles. You can buy them in like a four pack or six pack at the grocery store. I guess it's probably like a quarter bottle of champagne. That's like one serving of champagne, four yeah. ounces. Maybe it's six ounces. They're real small. They're little bottles. And uh, so I did that with all that liquor and that made two drinks. It's real close. Yeah, it's good. I it's mean, it's very close to what we had. The serving is not the bells and whistles, but it, it tastes real good. No, <laughs> they they served it much better. Yeah. Um, but just to just to have the taste of it. So equal parts, kachaka, rye, 
rum, lemon juice, and then two parts. Um, I'm sorry. Rye, rum, kachaka, and simple syrup. Two parts lemon juice and then um, probably four parts champagne and or whatever you know this was this wasn't french but whatever sparkling wine you have it's real tasty it's very good it's very good it's 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 one of those drinks that tastes really good but does pack a punch because three liquors three liquors yeah there's a lot of liquor in there um if you make this if you make it like this it's a it pretty much works out to a normal single cocktail not a single serving like ounce and a half of liquor, but a single cocktail. So say two ounces. So no tipsy Ingo, I guess. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll make you another one if you want I'll one. Start drinking beers. <laughs> <laughs> you already had two. Oh, tonight. Yeah, with dinner. Before, yeah. <laughs> yeah those, those don't count. Mm-hmm. That's a tasty drink. I did a good job. I am proud of myself. That was good. Marine Barracks... Artillery, Artillery Punch. Punch. Yep. Very good name. If you have the budget and the time, highly could not recommend more pineapple and pearls in DC. Yep. Okay. Uh, so that's the cocktail of the week. Administrative Corner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have much here this week, um, but we are going to record some new nacho clips to go in the cameos. Right. So... If you haven't ordered Cameo from us, Ingo and I both have a library of clips that we have taken of the dog. So they're in like party hats. They're doing fun stuff. They have flowers. And based on what people ask for, we stitch together clips. So maybe it features a specific dog right. or, you know, if it's a birthday, we've got some like specific birthday ones. And I think people have been afraid to ask, but if you want one of the angel dogs, we probably have clips of them too. I mean, from We just did one with back. some St. Patrick in it. Yeah. Somebody said that that was their favorite. And so we're like, here's some clips of st patrick being we have awesome we have videos of everybody yep um but they they're not videos typically like from the snaps like we will do a day where we record uh different sections that we then you know whatever we have a hundred clips and we kind of pick different ones and put them together and then do a voiceover but we don't have any with nacho yet voods is still in the snaps voods is going to remain in the snaps for a while uh because he does funny stuff he's so good um, if we, uh, as Jen said, if we were haunted by the spirit of Voods in this house, it would be great. Yeah, We'd would. both be psyched if like our toilet paper started disappearing. <laughs> it'd be great oh, it'd to be know great. that Voods' spirit was still here. Eating I'm, our stuff, it'd be like ripping off sleeves off my sweatshirts. That'd be fine. And I don't need to worry about him like getting sick from it because no. it just goes to Voods. I'd give up every sweatshirt to have the ghost of Voods. Right, me too. Oh my god, I'd, I'd get extra toilet paper. I I can't believe I'm getting weepy talking about this. And we I'm, haven't processed completely yet. That, that, guy, that so guy, guy is still very present in our in our memories. I read some article this weekend. I think after you left DC, when I was still up there, about like processing grief or something, and it was about um how poetry is actually really writing poetry is really good for helping people process grief which for the dog book that i'm writing i had actually come across an article about that specifically about grieving dogs and how writing poetry is good for that and i was like oh, a little more touchy-feely than most of the stuff in the book um but it's an interesting study that's just like people feel better and so i was like all right I'll try this. I clearly haven't processed the food stuff. So I wrote an extremely terrible poem about Voods. And then I cried for like 10 minutes, which I think is a good sign. No, that, that's like, bad. I'm processing. That's, that's wrong. I don't, I think we need to define processing. <laughs> I think making it go away would be processing. <laughs> Stop feeling for bad. For you, processing means making it real bad <laughs> so you can get like over it. Yeah. Mine's like, if, can you push it down further? Then, then then it's working. I feel like mentally I maybe have some healthier coping styles than you. I Everyone thinks that of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's the hero of their own story. Well, in any case. Anyway, how about, did anyone study like just prose, like the angel dog stories? Because those kind of are a good... They put me in a good frame of mind about stuff or a better frame of mind sometimes. Yeah, that's interesting. All of the stuff that I have found is really about writing as opposed to consuming. Mm. Um, though sure. I also really like the angel dog stories. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're not over him yet. We may not be. 
No. Um, and he's going to keep showing up in the cameos, but we're recording some new nacho clips this week. So if you request a cameo, we have a few pending, but if you request one, nacho will find his way in there one way or another. Spoiler, he'll probably be drinking in his weird way. <laughs> Ingo, Ingo does most of the cameos. I occasionally will do some. If people specifically request me, I do them. And then occasionally I'll jump in because it's like just more in line with what I do or whatever. Um, but we have very different styles. I wouldn't say either one is better. I mean, I actually think yours may be better than mine. I think yours may be better than mine. Um, <laughs> but they're they're very different. And you 100% in your style would pick the nacho drinking weird out of the bowl. <sighs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> So let's let's shift to dog updates. You want to talk about Nacho? That boy cannot drink out of a bowl. <laughs> what the heck? I don't know what. Who taught him that? He's real good at drinking out of a hose. Like yes, we haven't. Loves I don't it. think we have it on film or not much. We haven't had a lot of snaps about it. But if you have a hose or you're pouring the water, he'll he'll get under it and drink it real well. He like, wants the hose sprayed in his he'll, face. He'll chomp the spray. Like yeah. it's very fun activity for him but oh, you yeah. put it in a bowl and he like submerges his whole head underwater basically he absolutely does he put he waits until his mouth is touching the bottom of the bowl and then starts trying to drink and then just kind of <laughs> slurps <laughs> yeah he doesn't use his tongue the way a normal dog does he just slurps underwater i'm mm -hmm. surprised he doesn't get it up his nose i'm actually also pretty surprised by that <laughs> and then he lifts his entire wet head out and walks around and it's just dripping water i mean we, that's what bothers me the most not the style but the <laughs> the, the follow-on we have for the last uh whatever week and a half had towels wrapped around the little box that we have the dog bowl on his neck is always wet <laughs> always wet he's doing pretty good though he's uh yeah he's not fully settled in yet but he's getting better um we're making pretty ample use of the crate and it's really interesting where he'll be kind of agitated and wound up and pacing and kind of jumping on Remy and like come up to me and come up to Ingo and do the ball and walk around here. And you can tell like he's active because he's a puppy, but he's also agitated, yeah. right? And not sleeping. And if he's like that for too long, we put him in the crate and he literally like goes into the crate and immediately lays down and goes to sleep. Yeah, we've likened it to like a, uh, you know, an an agitated toddler or something where where they don't, they're overtired and they're not processing anymore, but they're running around a lot and you put them down and then they sleep. Yeah. It's better for them. You, I mean, you know more about that than me. It's, there's that phase where they're just a clearly tired and red eyed and grumpy and everything, <laughs> but they, they don't want to sleep. And then you kind of just, you know, you have to keep them quiet and try to get put them to Put them in the crib and close the door. Yeah. Drive them in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he likes the crate a lot. Like he's got no problem going in there. We'll toss his ball in there and he just goes in, lays down, pretty much instantly goes to sleep. It definitely calms him down. He feels so much more secure in there. Eventually it'll go away. Like we have no plans that he will have a perma crate. Once he settles in, I think he'll be fine. Yeah, but he's still he still is figuring everything out. It's clear that he's not, as you say, we don't exactly know what he's going to be like yet. Yeah. And so, yeah, why would you take away the thing that makes him calm and secure and lets him rest just so what? He's like sleeping out with everybody else and then more anxious. Like, it's great that he has this. It's such a good tool. It's I'm so grateful that he was crate trained before he came to us. He clearly is comfortable in a crate. Yeah. And we and also, of course, we don't really know what he's how he's destructive how how destructive he is when pushed or when bored or when overtired or something so we are there's some self-protection in letting him sleep in the crate too yeah he sleeps in there and then when we're out of the house he stays in there um he does occasionally jump up on the counter i don't think he's like a serious counter surfer but he doesn't have an inhibition to like check out what's up there he's he is very ball focused if you put a ball somewhere out of reach he'll remember where it is and he'll jump up to try to get yeah. it and then when we were gone this weekend, someone, and it wasn't necessarily Nacho, it could have been Chief Brody, but someone gnawed on the door frame going into the guest room. I had to patch it today. Yeah. So what happened there? It's like, you know, like a werewolf movie or something. I'm guessing the dog sitter probably went in there and closed the pocket door and someone wanted to get in and started gnawing on the door frame. 
which totally could have been Nacho, but it could have been Brody. He gnaws on shit if he can't get where he wants to See, get. The blinds yeah. or the door. Yeah, the other door. So who knows? But it could have been Nacho. Mysteries. Yeah. We, d- we did not get a report about it from the dog. No, she didn't say anything. But man, were there a bunch of chomp marks in it. <laughs> um, so yeah, Nacho's doing good. Just he needs more time. Um, but he's he's good. And we're giving it to him. As as people can see from the snaps, he's he's quite able to play with Remy. Those two have vibed on playing. In they that. sure have. They do a lot of air chomping and rolling around on each other kind of thing. Nacho kind of throwing himself on top of Remy. <laughs> Nacho throws himself into walls and <laughs> into the bed and he knocks cabinets over. I mean, he's he's still very g- galumpy. I mean, he has no idea what his body looks like, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's true. He's very funny. He, what uh, does he bonk his head just to the, earlier today? He like oh, I don't knocked know. his chin on something because he was following a ball oh, down or something. I was grabbing his, he was on his back and I was grabbing his paws and he was like trying to reach, <laughs> like do a sit up and chomp my hands. And then he gave up and then just Let collapsed his and conked his head on the ground. He was fine. <laughs> he doesn't know where anything doesn't is. Care. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah, he's doing good. Um, loves going for walks, loves going for swims. It hasn't exacerbated his knee at all. So we take him for walks a couple times a day. And is chasing the ball and stuff. Yeah. Is puking up less seawater when he swims. So, not none. So not far, less. so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, he's getting there. And he's a handsome boy. He's a, a handsome, good boy. handsome boy with ample tongue leakage. <laughs> um, other dog updates. Hopper tea. All right. If you're eating lunch. You got to skip ahead until we're not talking about Hopper anymore because it's going to be it's going to get gross. Or if you don't like gross stuff. If you, if you want to skip the gross biological parts, just just skip ahead. Maybe and, five minutes mm-hmm, until we're in ramblings. Um, <laughs> it's going to be about a snake. Whoa. If you don't like ska- snakes, keep skipping ahead <laughs> until Taste of the Keys, which is about somebody fleeing from deputies. But definitely, sk- even if you're not grossed out, just skip this whole <laughs> Just don't listen to our podcast. Yeah. Uh, so Hops on Friday. So we flew up to Maryland on Friday afternoon. And she had had an ear infection. This is a two-part story. and But like, it was weird because normally they get ear infections and they got to got like brown junk in their ear and she didn't have any of that but her ear was kind of squishy and damp if you pushed on her ear it sounded like there was liquid in there yeah and i had cleaned it out last you know middle of last week and on friday morning we woke up and it was really squishy and i called the vet and i was like you know hopper's got this weird ear infection can you guys get her in i've i've got stuff here to treat it like we've got the drops and everything um, but if you guys could take a look at it, that'd be great. And they're like, we're just completely booked. And I was like, you know what? It's fine. I'll give her the stuff and we'll bring her in next week. As we're, and we were flying out. So it was a short, you know, yeah, it was kind of, us. can we get it in this morning? Uh, so they couldn't get her in, which is okay. So we have this like ear flush, which is like antifungal, antibacterial, antimicrobial. And you squirt a whole bunch of it in the ears and kind of rub it around. And the ears all sound all squishy and the dogs shake their ears and it kind of cleans out the stuff. And then you give them the drops. So I was like, all right, I'm going to clean her ear out. So I get the flush. This is Friday. Yeah. This is Friday. Uh, squirt in her ears. Uh, but I got to shake the flush first. So I'm shaking the bottle. And as I'm shaking it, even though the top is screwed down tight, uh, it apparently is not perfectly not, not sealed. That tight. And I see a drop of the ear flush fly out of the tip into my right eye must have been almost slow motion for you it it 100 percent of my memory is slow motion one single drop flying into my eye my eye is still swollen from getting that ear flush one single drop of it into my eye uh yeah it was red for a, a day a long day yeah and puffy like not super obvious but if i'm like yeah, i was i saw my friend judy when i was up in maryland and i was like yeah i got this weird drop of ear flush in my eye and she's like oh yeah now that you say it i can see that it's swollen yeah it it wasn't like grotesquely swollen but it was yeah red puffy she's like it looks sort of like you're hungover i'm like but i'm not hungover <laughs> not. uh <laughs> in one eye it's been two days it's still now it's tuesday it's still not a hundred percent it's still kind of red and irritated uh i'll just say that flushing stuff has power 
It's powerful, but it was not powerful enough against her ear infection because I thoroughly rinsed it out on Friday before we left. And on Sunday, when you got home, you were like, her ear's kind of gross. And I was like, call first thing in the morning and get her into the vet. And so you took her up on Monday afternoon and you brought her in and they're like, uh, yeah, that liquid, that's pus in her mm. ear. Pus in her ear. I've had so many dogs have bad ear infections and it's always like bad, waxy, gross stuff. And maybe their ears are swollen. I But hers like... There was none of the brown waxy stuff. They weren't on Friday. They weren't swollen at all. They were just damp and freaking pus in her ear. Like she's pretty stoic about it. She was not complaining the way I would be complaining. Oh my God. I'm like, this is the worst feeling ever. Put me out of my misery. So I'm telling the story, but you were actually there. They shaved the fur on like the inside of her ears and did a pretty thorough cleaning. It sounds like. Yeah, and put some topical antibiotics in there. And then they're always, wor- you know, then they're, now we're going to culture it to see if it's the MRSA or something resistant and, you know, what, where there may be oral antibiotics involved. Yeah. But right now they are clean, but still a little swollen because they were in such bad shape. Yeah. Uh, which they, a hundred, if they had been swollen on Friday, I would have been like, come on, guys, we need to get in. Um, but they weren't. They looked totally normal, except one of them was kind of damp so it obviously flared up over the weekend i'm skipping over the details of the ear cleaning process (laughs) but it was very it took a lot of q-tips and gauze 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 balls pussy grossness it was the tech said she hadn't seen one that bad and Mm -hmm. there were two of them and it's she was like mostly fine on friday like it didn't look anything like that hi nacho fry Nice to have you up here in my face. Nacho is pretty snuggly when he's snuggly. <laughs> Don't eat the microphone. He's trying here. to eat the microphone. <laughs> Don't eat it. <laughs> I think his advice they give you at broadcaster school too, though. Try to eat the microphone. Nacho, don't try to eat the microphone. Um, that's all I had for dog updates. Do you have anything else to add? Everybody else has been, I think, pretty... It's Vank's birthday. Oh, my God. Vank! Your ears all vank. I mean, this is good news, right? Yeah, it is good. Uh, yeah, Vink's eight today. Which eight. I don't. I refuse to accept. This. I know. I do not receive the eight because she's my baby. I know. She's well. Oh. Nacho, you fell off the couch. <laughs> He's still got his front legs up here, but his butt has fallen off. All right, Nacho is now off the couch, and uh, Brody got his cone put back on. So Brody is still in the cone because his elbow, his stitches are out. I mean, they were out last week when we recorded, but still healing up and he licks it. He sneaks, licks. He yeah. waits. He acts all innocent while you're looking at him. And then <coughs> you look away for a little while and then <coughs> he starts going lick, 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 lick. Yep. Um, but otherwise, Brody's fine. He's getting there. Uh, yeah. Vink's birthday. She's an old lady, man. No, I don't. Vang. She's not. She's my baby. She will Vang, always be. Your old Vang. She will always be one <laughs> in my eyes. She'll be a little meatball. Vink is uh, the age of our marriage. She was born, but we had not picked her up <laughs> when we got married. <laughs> well, that also feels nice and young. Yeah. Um, any other dog updates you want to add before we move on to ramblings? No, except Brody. Then, but you, you squeezed in the bro- bro- You, you did a, a <laughs> great job. A great job. Poor Remy is doing a good job playing with his annoying younger brother. That's Nacho barking. We thought he didn't bark, but we were wrong. He Nacho. figured it out. Shut up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> On to ramblings. This is from the Daily Mail. The In the UK. <laughs> really tremendous uh, news outlet. High in the UK. quality stuff. Burmese python weighing 215 pounds and measuring nearly 18 feet long is found in Florida. Snake that ate an entire deer had 122 eggs inside its body. Oh, boy. And is the largest ever to be found in this state. (laughs) That's 122 snakes they intercepted. Deep in the swamps of Florida's Picayune Strand State Forest lived a Burmese python so large that it took three men to carry it out of the Everglades. This is a thing that we do. There are Florida, Florida authorities estimate that there are at least 30,000 to 300,000 pythons living in Florida. I got to say, that's a big range, you guys. <laughs> uh, 
But this snake is literally like three dudes. Ugh. And they each have the snake over their shoulder. That's so bad. Carrying the snake. That's a lot of iguanas, dude. Um, Yeah. They caught the snake in December and then they put it in a freezer. And then they took it out of the freezer in April. It dead. <laughs> Does it doesn't come back from that, just in case anybody's wondering. It's dead. Uh, they did a necropsy and then... <laughs> Found all the eggs. It took about 48 hours for the carcass to thaw. <laughs> and National Geographic's Rebecca Zomback said in her feature article, quote, the smell does not improve with time. <laughs> <laughs> and they, c- they cut the python open and they found 122 proto-eggs, the most ever found inside a python. That's just bad. Oh, they move. hadn't been fertilized yet, so. Good. The python had hoof cores and bits of fur in her digestive tract. <sighs> Which indicates her last meal was an adult white-tailed deer. My goodness. Wow. That's so bad news. <laughs> quote, so this is concerning. <laughs> 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 That's a horror movie. The start of a horror movie right there is like, so this is concerning. And then it's like all the buddies of that Titanoboa come out of the woodwork. They have. There's like a python hunting fest and prizes and stuff because they're super invasive. They kill all these like endangered species down here. And it's like people who got them as pets and they just let them grow and they thrive in the Everglades and they kill all the natural wildlife in our very fragile ecosystem. There's like Florida panthers down here and there's like very few of them left. They're super endangered and pythons eat them. So, I mean, I don't want to kill anything, but pythons. Yes. Pythons are bad. Also lionfish and lionfish. They're not even in danger. They're just all over the fucking place. And they're spiky and poisonous. Yeah. I just heard on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me that they they fa- they can make leather out of those fish now. <laughs> People are trying all sorts of things yeah. to do with those. They're eating them is one thing, right? Yeah. There was a shark tank where someone had uh, was pitching a whole business based on lionfish meat. And they have contests. There was just a thing in one of the Florida things about some woman who set the record for like the most lionfish caught. And it's just this boat that the whole boat is full of <laughs> lion. She's like laying on top of them. Wouldn't she spike herself? I saw that picture. I Wouldn't guess she when just... they're dead, they're not toxic. I don't know. She's got a lot of faith to lie she on does. those. I know. What we know are poisonous spikes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's just somebody sent that to me. Goes into ramblings. What, luckily, we have not seen a boa constrictor, although you've seen a snake here. There's a lot of snakes here. There's a snake living on our stairs these I days. I don't like it. It's a little snake. You stepped on it. I th- I think I stepped next to it, but I <laughs> felt it go across my foot. Oh yeah, my I'm like, snake. It's a little corn snake. It's not venomous. But it looks cool. It's got like orange and red, yeah. yellow and red and yeah. not stripes, but like a nice pattern. Yep. Uh, do you want to do German word of the week or taste of the keys? Um, I'll do German word. Great. Apropos of nothing, uh, the German word for cutting class or skipping school is Schulschwänzen. Which is school what? It's sort of like, I think it's a different root, but it's not, Schwanz is a word for tail. So it's like. Maybe it's hightailing in our school. I don't know, but oh, it's yeah. Schul, Schulschwänzen. Schulschwänzen. Die Schuleschwänzen. I didn't do any of that until I got to college. Schulschwänzer. Schulschwänzer. Yeah, Would I you bet. say ich schwänze Schul or? Schwänze die Schule, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you break it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, then. That's useful. It's, you know, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Taste of the keys this week. From Conk Life, straight from the annals of Conk Life. Excellent. Man arrested for fleeing from deputies. Classic throwback. It is. Consistently excellent stories. A 38-year-old Homestead, Florida man on probation and wearing an ankle bracelet was arrested Saturday <laughs> after fleeing from deputies on US-1. Where was he fleeing to? Who knows? He can't <laughs> flee to anywhere. Lazaro. We're just going to go with his first name. All right. Or maybe it's Lazaro. Laz. <laughs> Laz was charged with fleeing and eluding, reckless driving, hit and run, resisting arrest, and a litany of other traffic Hit and passes. run. That's not good. The incident began at approximately 7.30 p.m. when the sheriff's office was notified of a reckless driver in a white Dodge pickup truck traveling southbound on US-1 near mile marker 100. So that's all the way at the top of the Keys, headed towards Key West. 
The truck was reportedly involved in two previous crashes and was driving on the shoulder and sidewalk, nearly striking additional vehicles and pedestrians. Wow, this is like a movie. Multiple deputies observed the truck to be traveling at speeds greater than 80 miles per hour as the driver, later identified as Laz, refused <laughs> to stop multiple times. Wow, what an idiot. Multiple deputies terminated their pursuit due to public safety. I just, what's his long-term plan, right? Like hide in the bushes? Come on, there's no, there's no place. You can't go to anywhere. So at 7.30 p.m. at mile marker 100, the truck's tires were spiked. Yay. At mile 63. Wow, that's in Marathon, I think, isn't it? North, yeah, North tough in a marathon. marathon. Wow. And spiked again at mile marker 61. But Laz continued to flee, reaching speeds of 100 miles per hour without a tire oh. before stopping at mile marker 59, where he was taken into custody. 59 is still downtown Marathon, it's right? Marathon, yeah. I mean, it's getting pedestrian again there. For and, sure. Yeah. Deputies observed Laz was wearing an ankle bracelet that was ringing at the time of his arrest. <laughs> Laz, okay, another reason why. What was his long-term plan? Laz stated he was on house arrest in Homestead. No, he wasn't. He was in Florida in the Keys. He was taken to jail. He was taken. It's no kidding. <laughs> Boy, if, if ever there was a candidate. I, what was he doing? I don't know. There should have been an interview. <laughs> That's not what they do at Conk Ask him Life. what he was doing. I want to hear his explanation. The Conk Life, they don't do that. I wanted to get some cigars in Key West. They just they, write no. down the police report in Conk, Conk Life. I mean, you think you'd be a sense of urgency in getting somewhere, if, like t if you're smashing into two cars yeah. and flying down Route 1, where are you? <laughs> what's your goal? Where are you going? What are you doing? Do you think you can hop across uh, on a water ski and go to Cuba? No, you cannot, actually. We learned that last week. Previous uh, conclaves, <laughs> give, that doesn't work. It runs out of power. Yep. Or gas. Yep. You're not going to Cuba. You're going to end up on Route 1. You're going to end up taken to jail. With a bunch of spike strips. and <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the Monroe County Sheriff has spike strips. Lot and they love using them. I mean, I love it too. And if you miss them the first time, the second time they'll get you. They will. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I have. Ingo, do you want to add anything? No, that's very good. That was a very good story. I like the th throwbackness of the whole thing. I'm pretty pleased by it. Yeah. I like. I was like, ooh, fleeing deputies with their bike strips. Yes, there were. Was the he taking ankle bracelet jail? makes it just dumber, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. like obviously they could even track him. Where? I mean, he's not even going to be able to hide in the in the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for listening. And until next week, Slava Ukraini. And don't put anyone in unless they ask you to. Yeah, don't be a nacho. Bye. Bye. Bye.